not here. He has risen.
Park Bible Camp this summer. Just a couple of quick announcements as well. Tomorrow night is our Loggers with the Lord Bible Study at Buckshots here in town at 6 p.m. We invite you to join us uh, for that. Also, uh, confirmation returns this Wednesday for 7th graders starting um, at, um, at 5.30, and worship again is at 6.30. And next Sunday, we have two special things going on. During the worship service, high schooler Camby Reisemer will be our preacher, so we invite you to come and support her as she shares God's word with us at 9 a.m. And then we have a new member class. Um, at 6.30 p.m. as well on Sunday night. If you're interested in joining Trinity, please come to that class or speak with me after the service. We continue our service with our scripture readings. Our first reading comes from the 31st chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning with the first verse. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel. And they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for the rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from Colossians chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. So have you been raised with Christ? Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to the 28th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great, great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. One of my very favorite things about Easter services is the timpani. Now I have heard a timpani at Easter service since I don't even remember a service without it. Yeah, I was so young when I first heard it. And I love the sound of the timpani, but I have to say one thing. It's never loud enough. It just never is. Now, this is not a dispersion of my good friend Merrick here, who's been playing timpani for many years. He will tell you that there is a note next to his music that says, play loud. And every timpani player that I've ever had is never loud enough. I want to be so loud that the windows shake. I mean, I want it that loud. And the reason is because I want it to simulate 
the earthquake that is in the resurrection story from Matthew. You know, we call moments in life that shake us up earthquake moments, earth-shattering moments, moments that change our lives, moments that make us see the world in a different way. Think about some of the moments in your life that have been like that. I think of the first time I saw Star Wars and how that changed. By the way, the Lord blessed me with Star Wars on last night. I watched The Empire Strikes Back and most of Return of the Jedi before I went to bed. Or when you meet the love of your life. Think about that when I met Amy for the first time. Or maybe when you find that calling or that profession that means the most to you. And you realize this is your place. This is what you will do with your life. Or when your first child is born a grandchild. Earth-shattering moments that make us look at the world differently, that shake us up, literally. That sometimes even make us afraid because the ground is no longer stable beneath our feet. As someone who's been in an actual earthquake, I can tell you that when the ground moves, it's fearful. The resurrection of Jesus is an earth-shattering moment moments. We might take it for granted as Christians just how important what happens today is. Jesus rises from the grave and in doing so defeats sin, defeats death, defeats the devil and gives you eternal life. And if that's not enough, Christ does that for you for free to you. You don't earn it. You don't even deserve it. I don't deserve it. We are sinners who fall short of the glory of God, who so often make wrong choices, and yet the Son of God dies and rises for you. And in doing so, not only gives you the promise of eternal life, but frees you from all things so that you can live as God has created you to be, so that you can know that you're loved no matter what. That when the earth is slipping beneath your feet, when you are having earth-shattering moments that aren't positive, when you're experiencing suffering and death and loneliness and hardship, when it seems like the earth beneath your feet will go away and you will fall into a sinkhole of despair, there is Jesus, risen from the grave, giving you hope, giving you a new foundation and a new start and a new beginning. Comfort in the midst of pain, strength in the midst of weakness. It is an earth-shattering moment that changes how we look at the world because we see God active and moving in our lives. And we know no matter what, that God and Jesus Christ has our back. That when the timpani rolls and the earth shakes, God is there saving us. Loving us, giving us hope, and giving us a purpose to serve our neighbor, to love each other, and to know that no matter where we go and no matter what we do, we are not alone. We are not forgotten. No matter our mistakes, there is hope, there is grace, there is mercy, and there is love in Jesus Christ because Christ is risen. That's why we say hallelujah. That is why the trumpets sound and the timpani rolls so loud that it shakes the earth. Someday, I'm going to get a hundred timpanis in this building <laughs> and we're going to literally shake the foundation. But it might not come until God calls us to that heavenly home again. In the meantime... We will remember the earth-shattering moment of Christ's resurrection. And we will remember that we are saved, that we are loved, that we have hope, and that we have the promise of eternal life. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please stand and turn to our hymn number 373 in your red hymnal, 373.
We are a church together, and so let us compare our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Amazing God, your Son, Jesus Christ, defeated sin and death by rising from the grave, giving us hope and salvation in his name. Help us to live as people of hope, shouting hallelujahs in every aspect of our lives because of your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, you show us your love every day. Inspire us to love one another and to reach out to all those in need so they might have hope and new life. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, there are people we love who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. Heal them, give them strength, and help them feel your presence. Take away their fear, give them patience, and lift them to new life. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you bless us with all things. Help us to care for what you have given us, most especially your creation, and to be thankful for all the gifts you give us. Inspire us to use our time, talents, and treasures to further your kingdom, help those in need, and proclaim your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Savior, you defeated sin and death for us. By your resurrection, we have the promise of eternal life. Comfort all who grieve the loss of loved ones and help us stand firm on our promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, we pray for those who suffer in the midst of war and violence. Make us instruments of peace in your world and inspire our leaders to be people of compassion and to strive for peace in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to share a sign of peace um, with each other, and then we'll have our offering.
I invite you to please stand and turn to the hymn 385, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing.
Would you please rise? And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we continue with the benediction, I want to give thanks for all of our participants in our Easter sunrise service this morning. We give thanks for your talents and willingness to serve. I want to thank all of you who donated Easter lilies for the service and to Heather Knudsen, who organized it. We do ask that you leave the Easter lilies here for the next service, and you are more than welcome to come get up any about 10 o'clock. Second service is at around 10 o'clock. You can come and pick up your Easter lilies if you'd like to have them at home. We continue with our benediction. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We conclude with him 376, Thine is the glory. Thine is the glory.